who am I and who are you? This question might seem like some philosophical idle waste of time. I've found asking this question repeatedly has really helped me get to know who I am beyond the encapsulation of words, beyond trying to box myself into who I am with words. So let me illustrate the point because it's easier to ask who am I because I have more material, so to speak, to pull from. If I ask who are you, you can produce a lot of these same answers about yourself and you will see a lot of the same things I'm talking about. So let's get started. Who am I? Well, you might say I'm Jerry Banfield. Well, that's not my real legal name. I'm actually Gerald Banfield is my legal name. And then I have a middle name and I have initials after my name too. So am I Jerry Banfield? That's really an alias that I've kind of chosen for myself. That's one that my dad used also. So is that really who I am? A lot of people just know me as Jerry or Jerry B or or Jer Boy or a friend or hey bro or a random guy in the street. Most people on earth would not know who I am without me telling them. So how does that mean my name is who I really am if most people on earth would not know that about me without me telling them? If I have to tell every single person on earth my name, then they'd have to remember it too. So that obviously wouldn't work with all 7 billion of us. We all couldn't tell each other our names. Okay, so even trying to label myself with my name, you can see, starts to get complicated. Am I Gerald Banfield? Jerry Banfield? Am I Duke Asom, as I've been in a lot of video games online? Even trying to name myself starts to be challenging because did I have that name when I was born? Did I have that name before I was born? Who will I be after I die? You can see the name gets to be really challenging and yet the name is one of the biggest definitions we use to ourselves. And yet if I can't even have my name known by other people around the globe without telling them, that seems pretty limiting as far as who I am, doesn't it? What if people can't pronounce my name? Then to them, I might be Rary Ramfield or some other thing. So is that my name or is how I say it my name? So maybe we should move beyond a name. Okay, so who am I? Let's forget about the name. Maybe I could go with I'm a husband. If you saw me and my wife together anywhere around the planet, most people might think that's the husband and that's the wife. So you could say, okay, you're a husband. I'm married. Well, I haven't always been married. I wasn't married for most of my life. I've been married for about two and a half years now and I'm very happy to be married. And yet, I wasn't married most of my life. So how am I something now that I wasn't before. Wasn't I always a husband? Didn't I always have the potential to be a husband? But I wasn't a husband before. Now what if my wife passes away or what if I pass away? Is whoever's left still a husband or a wife? My dad passed away last year. My mom still feels like she's a wife. But she has no husband physically here on this earth now. So is she still a wife? She was a wife. She's been a wife most of her life. Am I a husband for all of my life? Or am I just a husband right this moment? Again, even with something you might see as easy to globally define, starts to be tricky and slippery when you put your hands on it. And that's the whole point of this. No one word can define who you are. No one thing can define who you are. And I will keep showing you more about that. So you could even look at my skin and say, okay, you're white. Anyone on the globe could see you're white. Well, what about someone who's blind? There's lots of people blind in the world. They wouldn't see any color. They would have no idea what white is. 
And in some places, I might be viewed, <laughs> maybe not a lot, as some darker shade of white. And in other places, I might be the whitiest, pastiest guy on earth. So there's different shades of white. So even my skin color is not something that could be universally agreed on. Some places I might be confused for coming from a specific place. Oh, you're from England, or you're from Germany, or you're from Poland, or who knows where you're from. Immediately, people would try and go beyond the simple, agreeable skin features and try and figure out more depth to them. And yet, if I was wearing a mask, if I was completely covered in something like a space suit, you'd have no idea what color my skin was. If you could just hear my voice, you might have a clue about my skin color. But depending on where you heard it in the world, you might not know my skin color at all from just my voice. So you might say something like skin color is important and yet skin color is not even something that can be consistently used either. Skin color is confusing. Skin color means different things in different places. Some places... Having a white skin tone means it's good. You don't have to work. You're not a field hand. You're not outside. You can afford to sit inside and luxury all day. In other places, it means the opposite. That you can't afford to take a vacation somewhere where you can get a little bit of a tan. That you're stuck in an office all day and that's why you're so white. And in other places, it means nothing. No one cares what color your skin is. And so... When you can see the skin color again, it might seem so simple and yet even skin color is very tricky to use to define who I am even though it's something most people in the world could see and have some agreement on. It's something almost all people in the world could see and have some disagreement on also. And now you might say, okay, this is exhausting trying to describe you by your name and whether you're a husband and your skin color. Give me some of your characteristics and then I can describe you. Okay, let's give you one. I, I think I'm honest. You might be able to say, oh, I can feel you're honest through these videos because no one would talk this way about themselves if they weren't honest because you make yourself look bad or you make yourself look too good or whatever. Okay, if you say I'm honest, I can give you a lot of examples where I've been dishonest where I've stabbed people in the back, where I've lied outright, or I've made a very clever lie. Does that make me then dishonest? And so you could switch and say, okay, based on the evidence you've given me, you are clearly dishonest. You've lied to people before. You've done plenty of dishonest things in your life. You're obviously dishonest. Then I can give you a bunch of evidence of where I am honest where I've shared a bunch of painful secrets with people honestly and as truthfully as I could remember them and where I've tried to be honest in so many different aspects of my life. So then you could say, okay, well maybe you've been more honest than dishonest in your life. Maybe the collective amount of honest versus dishonest weighs in favor of honest. Well, don't I have to be one or the other? And the thing is, that's where it gets confusing. Am I honest or dishonest? The fact is, I'm both honest and dishonest. And the fact is, I'm neither honest nor dishonest. Using any single word to try and describe anyone starts to be almost impossible. If you want to use science, if you want to look at the evidence, using any one word starts to be extremely tricky. For example... You could look at someone who's committed a crime and say, that's a criminal. They deserve to go to prison. They stole something. They robbed an old lady. They murdered a kid. You could say, that's a criminal. And that person could have done only that one criminal act their whole life. It's possible. They had never done anything else wrong before that. And one moment, they went crazy for a minute and flipped and committed the crime you saw. And yet... You'd look and say, okay, they're a criminal. They deserve prison time for whatever they did. And then you could look at someone else. They never got caught doing 10,000 different crimes. And they're in a position 
where no one knows about their crimes and you could look at them and say they're not a criminal. You could be calling the criminal who's done one wrong thing and got caught a criminal and you could be calling someone else who's done 10,000 violations of the law and all kinds of things and hasn't got caught. You'd be calling them not a criminal. I've done plenty of things wrong in my life and most people wouldn't call me a criminal because I haven't got caught doing those things. And yet I was a police officer. I caught plenty of people doing things wrong. And yet most people wouldn't call most of those people a criminal either because, well, they just got a drunk driving ticket that one night or they did this or that. And yet then we look at other people and say, oh, that's, that's a bad person. And what you can see is it's very difficult to even get something down like whether someone is a criminal or not because it's all so subjective. It's all timing and luck. There are lots of people out there who can't hardly do anything wrong without getting caught. And there are lots of people out there who can do things wrong all the time, all over the place and get away with it all the time. And so when you look at our criminal justice system, you can see it's almost as if we're arbitrarily throwing people in prison. And that, to me, shows the difficulty of trying to define someone by one word or one thing they've done. It ends up being very arbitrary. The relationship you're in, the job you have right now. You could say, oh, you're an entrepreneur. You've got your own business online. I haven't had my business online most of my life. I haven't been an entrepreneur most of my life. Is that what I am now? Well, I just make some videos and upload them. You could say, well, that's not much of an entrepreneur. You could look at it and say, you've just got a couple of computers in your house and a couple of contractors online. That's not much of a business. You don't have a physical office location that's not in your home. You don't have a company headquarters anywhere. And then you, you could look at other things and say, you've got a gigantic audience online, you've got a huge business. Someone could come in and praise my business and say it's practically worthless. Someone else could come in and say my business is worth five or $10 million. Who's right? The thing is, everything is so relative. Everything must be defined in terms of something else. And you, when you can see the difficulties of doing that, you can see the consequences of doing that yourself and you can see a deeper person that you are. You can see a person who's not limited to one or two certain words. For example, I used to think I was a gamer. I am a gamer. That's part of who I am. And I'm smart. I'm real smart. That's part of who I am. And what I did was ignore all the evidence I was stupid. I ignored all the evidence I wasn't a gamer. When you look at your life honestly, you can see for anything you think you are, there's also evidence that you're not that. And that's a miracle because when you don't limit yourself, when you don't limit yourself to just a certain set of words, or ideas, or labels, then you can be anything. You can do anything. You can do what you're meant to in this life. As long as you confine yourself to certain words and you treat yourself like an object who has no depth, who is simply a husband or a father or a co-worker or whatever else you've done in your life that you're calling yourself that. As long as you limit yourself to that, you will be limited. You won't see outside of where you're at. You won't see how much depth there is to who you are. Because there's a lot, there's infinite depth to who I am. And I'm just seeing that now. And it allows me to do so much more. It allows me to do what people look at and say is an amazing thing. And all I'm really doing is getting to know myself. 
dropping the idea that I'm this fixed set of labels the world has given me and that I've accepted. And so you have the chance to do the same thing today. And so I pray in sharing this with you that I will not confine my idea of who I am to any one label in my life or even any set of labels in my life. I pray that I will continue to look for the depth in myself each moment and that by sharing that with you, you have the same chance with yourself today. I'm honored you're here with me. I appreciate you watching this, each moment of it. I value your feedback and I hope you have a great day today.